foggy Sunday morning. It's also a great morning to uh, celebrate the affirmation of baptism with five of our young people. And that insert should be in your bulletin, their names and their Bible verses to take those uh, to share with us here this morning. So uh, they did a lot of work. I'm going to miss them in class, but in many ways, uh, this is just the beginning of their, of their faith journey. Them and celebrate that and to, uh, welcome them into full membership now. Uh, a few announcements I want to share with you. Uh, you can your prayers uh, the family of Max and Benji upon her death last week. Uh, Aaron and Mike especially. And so there will be a private family gathering here on Tuesday. Uh, so about our owls. It's now on the first Monday of the month, so that'll be the next next Monday on October uh, 7th. So please take note of that and we'll be you there. And also, uh, it's never too early to think about Halloween. And Andy, we're going to have our country event out in our parking lot on October 30th. And uh, by all means, uh, it's about bringing your car and opening up the trunk that way that we will have really all of our announcements this morning. As we celebrate God's presence with us, I invite the congregation to please stand as we begin with our confession and forgiveness of the Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the strength of our ancestors, the host of this meal, the builder of the city that is to come. We have died with Christ also live with Christ. Let us confess our sins to the one who is faithful. God our helper, we confess the many ways we have failed to live as your disciples. We have not finished what we began. We have feasted with friends but ignored strangers. We have been captivated by our possessions. Lift our burdens, gracious God. Refresh our hearts and forgive our sins. Raise us to new life you have chosen for us. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is rejoicing in heaven when sinners repent. Put your trust in these promises. That God will never leave you or forsake you. To you who were lost and now been found. For the sake of Jesus Christ, Let us rejoice in the angels and the
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Be seated, please. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy. Chapter 31. When Moses finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to get about, and the Lord has told me, You shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over before you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua also will cross over before you as the Lord promised. The Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon of Og, the king of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will give them over to you, and you shall deal with them in full accord with the command that I have given to you. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and bold, for you are the one who will go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their ancestors to give them, and you will put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and to all the elders of Israel. Moses commanded them, Every seventh year in the scheduled year of remission during the festival of booths, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women, and children, as well as the aliens residing in your towns, so that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God and to observe diligently all the words of this law, and so that their children, who have not known it, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land that you are crossing over the Jordan to possess. This is the word of the Lord. And we'll read Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord your gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders, 
The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Amen. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Everyone who hears these these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Um, Depending on where you see yourself, you can, this is either the children's sermon or the sermon. Um, If you want to be a child and listen to it as a child, uh, go for it. God's grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. So the psalmist tells us. And we are here celebrating today five young people in the, in the congregation who have listened to that voice. Uh, not only during these two years of confirmation studies, but also throughout their lives, from the time of their baptism. That voice, whether they were aware of it or not, has been a part of their lives. It is there for them. That is 
That is what we're here to commemorate and to celebrate today with these five young people coming, coming to the altar uh, to affirm their baptism, to affirm their, their reality of being God's children. And what it is now to begin to take more responsibility for listening to that voice, that voice of God, and hearing his words, hearing God's words in their life. What is that about? What does that look like for them? What does it look like for us? I know in reading these texts and preparing for, for this sermon you know, today, I really thought about you know, how when I was confirmed too many years ago to remember, uh, but when I was confirmed, yeah, the focus was on this powerful voice and how powerful God was, how mighty God was, how glorious God was. And that tended to be my focus. And if I wasn't doing powerful things and glorious things, I wasn't doing God's will in my life. Here we are today celebrating these promises that we make to God in light of God's promises to us. And as I have continued on my journey of faith through, through my baptism and through my confirmation and, and through my ordination, my listening to that voice of God has taken a very different Tack and a very different, tra very different track. For now, I find myself listening for God's voice in the silence, in the quiet of every day. I was amazed this morning. I live just six blocks north of I six eighty. And normally there's all kinds of traffic going back and forth. I get truck traffic and motorcycles. But I was awake at four this morning and I was amazed. I think part of it is this, just the weather, but it was amazing, the silence of that, of that moment, of that time. And hearing God's voice in saying, you know, that I have a big responsibility this morning to say to you, and especially to the, the five of you who are being confirmed, of what it what will mean for you to be listening to God's voice, hearing God's word as you journey through your remarkable lives. What will that be about? It is a promise you make this day in response to God's promises to you. What, what will that involve? And the one thing I would say to you this morning from my perspective, and I'm gonna let Pastor Chris take part of my time here this morning uh, to speak directly to you because I also know he he worked much more with you than I have but the one thing I would I would want to listen have you listen to is Jesus voice from the cross his joys of love and forgiveness it wasn't spoken with a loud powerful voice it was spoken with a voice that probably those around the cross could barely hear. But that is the word that God wants us to hear. God was willing to come into this world and suffer and die with us. Not for us, but with us. 
so that we might hear the legitimacy of his voice. That we might hear what God's word has in mind for us. And later you will be participating in, in the Lord's Supper again. And in that meal that you promise to continue to be a part of throughout your life. In that meal, we take, we take this simple meal and we take the body and the blood. And in death, the blood is separated from the body. It is a symbol of death. And it is what God did for us. God and with us. And God dies with us. We have a God who's willing to do that with us. So that it can be joined again in our bodies. So that we might know the spark of God's image. The spark of Jesus' spirit within our lives. Within your lives. As you walk this journey of faith. I celebrate with you. Congratulations. This is an important, important step in your journey of faith. Um, may that journey be filled with many blessings. Um, amen. Thank you, Pastor. He asked me if I wanted to give a pep talk. I said, well, maybe I could bet Scott Frost did last night. But it's not just a pep talk. It's, it's words of encouragement because, um, yes, we hear God's voice when we come to this place. And we hear God's voice in our life, a voice that's been speaking to you since the day you were born, since the day you were baptized. And one of the things that has really stuck in my mind uh, over the years is the saying that, the youth are the church of the future. And to me, that's an offensive uh, statement because the youth are not the church of the future. The youth are the church of today. And you are the church of today. And as you have come, as you have been formed in your faith, the faith that your parents, as I met with each of you individually, and I told you to look your parents in the eyes or to go home and to share that with your parents and to tell them thank you. And we thank your parents because it was your parents' faith, it was the faith of your mentors, your grandparents, and all who are here today who have really helped support you in your growth as a person, as a young man, as a young woman, but as a person of faith. And they have, in many ways, been that voice for you as you have grown since that time when you were a baby, that time when you were baptized, memories that they have probably you don't remember. But it was their faith that brought you to the waters of that font. And so today, as you affirm your uh, promises that God gave to you in the waters of baptism, the reason we light that baptismal cross today is because that light was lit the day you were baptized. That's the light of Christ, the light that you now get to carry out into the world. And so it's your voice as we talk about voices, as we talk about hearing the word of God and coming to receive the Lord's Supper as part of a disciple, as who we are as disciples. Don't ever underestimate that you are the church of today, that it's your voice now that gets to be amongst our voices. And in many ways, I as a pastor have been your student too, listening to you as youth uh, listening to your hopes and dreams, listening to your questions, enjoying every minute of my time with you. And so as you celebrate with your families today the promises that God gave to you in your baptism, Zach, Owen, Bay, Ella, Samuel, where is Samuel? There he is back there. Just know that we are here to continue to support you in your faith journey, yes. To be 
there for you to help you hear God's voice, but also know that you, your voice matters. Your voice is important, that God is speaking through you as you carry that light of Christ out into the world. And so never underestimate the power that you have to share that good news. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these young people, for their journey of faith since they were baptized from the waters of baptism in which you claim them as your own. As they affirm their faith here with us today, help us, yes, to support them, but help us also to embrace them as young people in our church, church of today, whose voices matter to us. Help them to speak to us and to remind us of the love that you share with us and of this world. Blessings to each of them this day and forevermore. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand as we continue with our next hymn. <clears throat> gave his mandate share the good news that he came to save us and set us free listen listen God is calling offering forgiveness comfort and joy let none be forgotten Throughout the world, in the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word, inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Help us to be faithful. Stand steadfast walking in your precepts led by your word listen listen God is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy sustained and nurtured by our generous God. We gather as one to pray for the church, for the world, for all of God's creation. Watch over the church, O God, so that we place your good news above all worldly gain. Deliver us from the temptations of comfort and complacency. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over your creation especially the life-giving water that sustains us. Heal oceans, rivers, and lakes around the world, where drought and floods make turmoil of settled, our settled ways, give strength for healing and rebuilding affected communities. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over the nations. Lead us away from fear and hatred. Show us instead how to welcome the stranger, give shelter to those fleeing violence, and provide food to those who are impoverished. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over those in any need, those who are grieving, who are suffering and lost, those those lonely and oppressed, underemployed and imprisoned. Especially we remember uh, the family of Maxine 
and others that we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, watch over all caregivers. Give strength to those who attend relatives, who serve the sick, who minister to prisoners, who bring food or communion to the homebound. May they bring joy to those they visit. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for the saints and their models of faithful living. Give us hope as we look toward the day when we will join them in your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, assured by your promise to hear us, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I would like to invite our compromands forward uh, as they affirm their faith. Uh, I'd invite uh, their parents, the grandparents, any family members or sponsors to please join them uh, to, to stand behind them for the laying out of hands. Uh, so I invite the confirmations. We'll spread right across. I have a feeling that that's going to be half of our congregation here this morning. So uh, we'll spread out. And so we present for those who desire to make their public affirmation of their baptism, Ella Marie Post, Owen Christian Moeller, Zachary James Tonages, Samuel Adam Liskey, Lily Bay Warner. I'll give you time to assemble here. Zach, if you want to. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You've called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your Holy Spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold now your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So I invite the congregation and our confirmands to turn to page 235 in the very front of your hymnal. And so I ask all of you together, you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. And so he asked, do you renounce the devil and all forces that defy God? If so, please respond together, I renounce them. And do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. I invite the congregation to please stand as we confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so I ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
I invite the congregation to be seated. Confirmands, you have made a public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism, which is to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for peace and justice in all of the earth. If so, please respond together. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, Morning Star Lutheran Church, sponsors and parents, do you promise to support these young people and to pray for them and their life in Christ? We do and we ask God to help and guide us. And let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us now to eternal life. So we're going to start here with, with Zachary, and he's going to read his Zachary, oh, I'm sorry, Owen Christian Moeller, and he's going to read his scripture verse. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Colossians 3.12. I'll have you kneel, Owen. I invite uh, parents to, and sponsors to lay hands on him. Stir up now in Owen Christian Moeller the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Lily Bay Warner, and I'll have you read your verse. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Okay, I invite you to kneel as we lay hands on you. Stir up now in Lily Bay Warner, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Now we come to Zach. Zachary James Tonages. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 invite you to kneel. Stir up now in Zachary James Tonages the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Samuel Adam Liskey. I am with you, I am with you always to the end of the age. I'll invite you to kneel, Samuel. Stir up now in Samuel Adam Liskey, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. I 
All right, Ella Marie. Ella Marie Post. I'll have you kneel, please. You got it. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye but do not notice the log in your own eye? Stir up now in Ella Marie Post the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us now rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. Well, it is my distinct privilege to introduce to you our five confirmands. I'm going to have them turn and face the congregation. Let's give them a warm congratulatory applause. We're proud of, we're proud of each of you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's stand and share that peace now with one another. Congratulations. God's peace, congratulations. Bay, congratulations and God's peace. Owen. Congratulations and God's peace. Here you go, Bay. Don't forget this. our service today, I would like to invite the congregation to join us for fellowship as we share uh, congratulations with our confirmands and we'll have a cake in their honor in our gathering space. We continue with our worship with by sharing our gifts and our offerings. Be seated, please. In the quiet, misty morning, when the moon has gone to bed, when the sparrows stop their singing, and the sky is clear and red, when the summer ceased its gleaming, when the corn is past its prime, when adventure's lost its meaning, I'll be homeward bound in time. Bind me not to the pasture, chain me not to the plow, set me I'll return to you somehow. If you find it's me you're missing, if you're hoping I'll return, to your thoughts I'll soon be listening in the road I'll stop. 
stop and turn then the wind will set me racing as my journey nears its end and the path i'll be retracing when i'm homeward bound again bind me not to the pasture chain me not to the plow set me free to find my calling and i'll return to you somehow in the quiet misty morning when the moon has gone to bed when the sparrows stop their singing i'll be Let us pray. God, our provider, we bring nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it except the gifts you have first given to us, which we bring now to your table, and with them the offering of our very lives. Nourish us now with a life that really is life, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table has been prepared and all are invited. Be seated, please.
I invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of blessing, at this table we have seen you face to face, and in the gift of Christ's body and blood, our hearts have been refreshed. Send us now to shine with your goodness and bear witness to the one we have received, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living with us. Almighty God bless you with grace, mercy, and peace, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth now in peace to live and love as Christ has first loved us. Thanks be to God.